Welcome to 0211 Confidentiality, Integrity, and Availability. We're going to learn about CIA and the CIA triad. That's all three of these letters. The Internet of Things and how to protect against web trafficking or track tracking, not trafficking. That's a different lesson. Probably not in this class. Let's start. Open up your lab. So, in this activity, you'll begin to explore cybersecurity considerations beyond the personal space. That was last unit, all your personal stuff, right? This is about, like, the internet and setting up an e-commerce site and uh, a little bit more. What are some considerations security experts have in mind when they design information systems for schools or institutions, businesses, government, whatever? You got to design a whole system, not just your personal laptop, like a larger system. So review the cyber case. And if you check it out right now, the idea is there you're an e-commerce site and there's an e-commerce site. It's a mom and pop shop and they want to build a website. You know, maybe that's a common thing right now in COVID. And so they've never had an e-commerce website, but they're like, Hey, I want to sell my stuff online. Not getting a lot of foot traffic right now. So if you want to do this online, they say, I got to build a product database. I made a nice website. You got to inventory things. You got to ship things. And you have to have a system in place to like keep track of all that information. They want to be having an electronic system to track and manage the tasks and activities. So like what comes in, when it comes in, uh, when are things packed to ship out and, and all, all sorts of better tracking things with the system. Uh, they also want people to be able to buy the stuff online, an e-commerce website. So the, what you're coming in is how do you make sure everything's safe and secure? How do you protect their system? I mean, now they're doing things online, uh, especially a small mom and pop place. They might not have everything considered. And if you don't do things right, it can be very easy for um, hackers or people to come in and maybe steal your client information, steal credit card information. And you, you have to keep that information secure for people to trust your website or all sorts of things they can do. So what are you have, to, how will you secure it? Uh, some of the data on a website has, can be more secure than others. Like I don't want the credit card information to be shared, but I want to share all the stuff I have available. That better be easy to access. So there's a lot of trade-offs here and this lesson today is learning about those trade-offs of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So uh, you can work with a partner to brainstorm information e-commerce sites need to protect. I'm going to leave that up to you. But let's talk about what the CIA triad is. So you can play this video. And it's pretty good. Uh, should we play it right now? If you're doing, you know what, let's play this. Are we sharing sound? Uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm sharing sounds. So let's go. Oh, I don't know if I am. Okay. I'm not sharing sound, but at least in the video. So what we're going to do, we're going to skip through this and check it out yourselves. So the idea with the CIA triad is we, it's not the actual CIA. It's about confidentiality, availability, and integrity. And these are like the, the three things you have to consider uh, on how you want to use your information on any kind of like cyber, when, you, when things are going to be available online. So confidentiality is about protecting your data from author, unauthorized access. How important is this to you to keep that data protected? So that only authorized people can get it. And so certain types of data might be really important to keep that locked down, like credit card information or, I don't know, social security numbers. Those things might be very important to keep locked down. Some things might not be. Like, I don't want to protect, like, maybe you, you're you okay. Like, what do I have available on my store? What to sell? That may not have to be private. Integrity is ensuring the data is never tampered with. How important is that data to be 100% accurate 100% of the time? You know, is it okay? Or how is it to always be available? And or not always available, but, you know, accurate. Like, is it okay if, like, the system bugs down a little bit? Is that going to be the end of the world? Uh, maybe. 
but you consider out how important is that to you that 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 data stays accurate and is not able to be tampered with or and the last thing is availability is it important that that data is easily accessible to authorized users or whoever you want to have access to it, that information uh certain things might that might be important like hey i want my website to be accessible by everyone. I want that to be up all the time. That might be very important, right? Um, is, so these, these are three things to consider. And you might be like, well, I want all those things. But a lot of it is, is like, what's your trade-offs? And as like another anecdote, sometimes when you get, want to get a job done, you can either get it like done cheap, done well, or done fast, right? And sometimes you go, you go get it done cheap, do you done fast or do you get it done well? Pick two out of three. So sometimes if you want a job done and you want it done cheap and you want it done fast, well, it might not be done well, right? But if you want people to do a really good job and you want them to do it quick, maybe it's not going to be very cheap. So you, you can't always get all three sometimes. And sometimes you can, you can make some trade-offs and say, hey, well, maybe it doesn't matter if this information is confidential or only authorized people can access it. Maybe you don't care. Maybe as much. Maybe it's more important that it's available. Or maybe confidentiality is the most important thing. So if it's a little more annoying to use, or, you know, oh, maybe integrity would be important too. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not always important that this is available all the time and everyone can access it very easily that it's supposed to. And maybe it's, it's okay that you know, the integrity is not always there. But you sometimes have to make these trade-offs. So we call this the CIA triad, right? So we'll get some examples. So implementing the CIA triad doesn't necessarily need to be perfectly balanced in every information system. So not every system requires high confidentiality or high integrity or high availability. I mean, you probably want some of that, but what's your priority here? So the, every in every part of the data, you can every part of their yeah, data, you can consider this kind of stuff. So there's another video on designing a security plan here. And if you check this out, the idea is that they give you some examples on what would be important for each of these. So one example is, hey, with the um, confidentiality here, Let's do a confidentiality first. I think that's the first one we do here. Like, hey, is it important for users to be able to download things easily? Is it important that, are you going to require people to log in every day? Or can they save their passwords? You know, um, so that, that might be a consideration. Like, it, does, it, does it, are you, if it doesn't have to be confidential, maybe you're okay if people can save passwords. Like, you go to Netflix. Do you have to enter your password every time? No. They're not worried about that being so confidential. Like you let you stay signed in. It doesn't matter. It's your bank account. They're probably going to make you sign in every time and use things like two-factor authentication. So different, different things to consider. If there's public-facing information versus what's private here. So sometimes the public-facing information doesn't have to be as confidential. Probably not at all. So it's public. But maybe you want like your website to be super available. And maybe you want some integrity there. Maybe you want that data to be accurate. <laughs> like if stuff's available, it should be what's available. So uh, there's trade-offs here. So some examples, they give great ones here. What would be a high confidentiality thing? So the idea is you put your dot somewhere in this triangle. So a high confidentiality things versus availability and integrity, integrity could be like government secrets or critical access codes for critical systems. So, you know, if you're a nuclear power plant and people that are, you know, controlling, uh, controlling the safety mechanisms of things, it would be super important to keep that from outsiders from messing around. Uh, financial information, would, you'd want to keep that confidential. And credit card numbers, yeah, that stuff's real important to keep confidential. Now, the integrity. What's something that integrity would matter? Like air traffic control data. And this is that what matters is making sure this is 100% accurate. Like, and the idea I think behind this, like this confuses me sometimes. It's like, you want to make sure that 
it's important that your bank account information is accurate or like the website, you want that to be accurate. But, you know, sometimes the website messes up. Is that okay? Like sometimes says, oh, there's no product available. Maybe there's like a glitch in the system. Or maybe, maybe something got weird. Or someone, someone in your workplace entered the wrong number at one point. Maybe that's not going to, you know, is that important? It maybe it's, but there's, maybe that's not as important to keep the integrity of that. Because maybe no one dies there. But take air traffic control data. If you don't have accurate information of where all the planes are, and they're supposed to communicate with each other, well, that's where you can have, you know, accidents. This is where planes can collide, or maybe they, they're, they're two are trying to land at the same time because the air traffic control data wasn't accurate. So you, you need, or there wasn't available at all. So you want that data to be accurate. You want it to be, and so that they can access this. Hospital data. Yeah, you want that data to be accurate so you're given the right dosage of of uh, drugs, um, right types of surgery. You don't want to take out someone's kidney and it's the wrong person. That would be really bad. You don't want to overdose them on the wrong prescription medicine. That's important. So integrity is important in those. What's availability? Like, hey, movie times and stuff. I, if I'm if I'm having like a website where, hey, I want to post the movie times, I want to make sure that's always available. I don't want my website going down all the time because of whatever. I, I just, I, I, like especially a commercial business and like public information, I want that just always there. So that is my high priority, right? So there are trade-offs in all these things and on where you'd really put these. You probably, you know, sometimes you want a little of all three, but those are examples where maybe one of those three is a higher priority. All right. So work with your team to discuss and decide what the CIA triangle might look like for each of the following types. So think about this on your, maybe on your own social security number, family calendar, personal health records, online product. Uh, and if you draw the triangle here, I, I want to leave that. I'll leave that up to you, you to try, but think about those things and think about where they'd fall in each of those areas. Okay. I'm going to skip ahead. Okay, we've talked CIA triad. Review that cyber case. We've done that before. For each category listed in the table below, enter your thoughts about each CIA component and data category. You should consider data needs from the perspective, the online store being fully operational. So I'm going to fill this in myself. Uh, confidentiality. Who should have access to view each data category? Okay, so this is these are things to consider. So, okay, so here's this table. So e-commerce site, you got your product catalog. So what's available? Customer order information. So their name, address, phone number, you know, their contact info. Uh, website information, web pages, and other non-product information, such as shipping method and return policy. So the ca there's the product catalog, and then there's like the other. So this is like what's available, but then here's like the non-product stuff on the website. So they've... Like how do how do we ship? Um, who to contact? Right, customer service and stuff like that, and employee information. So like you're probably saving it somewhere in your e-commerce, like um, so you know, information about your employees because this is about putting payroll together and stuff like that. It's not just the public facing things, right? So for confidentiality, think about this: who should have access to view each data category? Is it internal users, external users, or both? Does the data require encryption? Why or why not? So is this information that should be like yeah, encrypted so it's a little bit more pri private? Maybe. Okay, integrity. This the integrity, honestly, guys, this is the one that I sometimes get confused with confidentiality, right? Because who should, who should have access to modify the data? Internal users, external users, or both? Yeah, so I, I feel like sometimes those two things blend, right? Confidentiality is like preventing access to this or to even read the data, right? Integrity is about like someone modifying the data or even getting modified on accident, just some blip in the system, right? I don't know, sometimes that just happens, some glitch in the system. So who should have access, but sometimes it's like having access for humans to modify that data. It, it, you know, 
who should have access to modify the data, internal users, employee, external users, or both. I mean, who should have access? And availability, what level of availability does the data require and why? So let's look at this. Okay, I like this table. Who views the product catalog? Probably the customers. Do employees view it? Um, do employees have to view this too? I think they should be able to view it. Okay, you might have different answers, folks, than me, and that's fine. I don't know if there's one right answer for these things, but don't be, be okay if not. Product catalog, I think both should be able to view it. So question, would you encrypt this data? Do you need to make this private? I would say no. My, my guess would be no. I mean, for me, because this is, this is stuff I want to be easily accessible to the public. I want anyone to go to my website and see this without having to log in or to verify what type of user they are. I just, sometimes you want to make it easy for people because if it's annoying, then people don't do it. So I would say no. Why? I want to have it accessible. Integrity, integrity, who modifies the data? Okay. So I think only employees should modify that data, probably, of what's available. Now, sometimes like, you know, the only, the only um, weird thing on this is like, you know how you, like, you buy things, you buy like tickets at like Ticketmaster. Remember back in the day when we go to concerts and stuff? Well, when you put a ticket in your shopping cart, usually that takes one of those tickets away. So like someone, you know, oh, I'm going to buy this ticket, like especially if they're going to go out really quick. If you put it in your shopping cart, I think this happened with the Comic-Con too. Then you have it secured for like 15 minutes and it's yours to purchase. They give you that time to like go through the whole system and finalize that purchase. So in a way, I could make an, uh, so the customer is kind of modifying that product catalog or modifying the availability of the product just by putting in their shopping carts, at least temporarily. So you can make that argument in that case that maybe, but that's a weird case. I'm going to say no. If you're saying like what's actually on the website, no. Okay, a weird thing is like, what if you're like Etsy, right? Or some, some other like you're an e-commerce website, but you have like a lot of like people come in to sell stuff. Even Amazon does. It's like third parties, right? So the product catalog can be created by, it's not like customers, but it's like a certain level of customers. These like, you know, these small business people that add stuff to the prop to the store. So it's not employee. They're not really employees, but they're kind of like they're selling stuff through a separate e-commerce website like Etsy or whatever. So you could make arguments there, but maybe I'm just getting weird. I'm making this video last too long. When is it needed and by whom? When is this needed? I would say all of the time. This is needed like 24 seven by customers. You want people to browse your catalog, you know, whenever they want to shop. You want your website to be like, oh, I'm sorry. It only works between eight and five. No. Someone's like sitting there at home midnight and wants to go shopping. I want Amazon to work. I want them to be able to make those orders all the time. Now, customer order information. Uh, customer and order for information. So this is like the name, address, phone number. Uh, when customer puts their information, well, they should be able to see it too because they're putting that in. But employees probably have to see that too. They got to ship things. Is this encrypted? Do you want this to be like this data, especially when it's being sent over the internet to be like encrypted so like people can't see it? Yeah. I, like especially if it's phone numbers. I mean, it might be credit card information. You don't want any of that to come out. And that's a big deal for data privacy. So anytime you're sending people's information, that should be encrypted. Who can modify this? So a customer should be able to modify who they are. Should an employee be able to modify that? Well, that's the thing. Like, do you want an employee to be able to modify someone's name? I would say no. Their, their personal information, their address. I mean, maybe if they made an order, like, oh, who it should send to or, but I think only, maybe employees too, you can make an argument, but I'm going to say only customers. And when is this information available? Eh. Is it important? Like, okay, if I go to the website, I want to know like, oh, geez, 
I want to update my address on Amazon. It's probably needed all the time, but if it doesn't work right now, is that a big deal? Or if the website goes down or if I want to track my order, is it okay if, oh, we, we're temporarily? So probably still 24 seven, but I, I feel like by the customers, but and I think that information should be available during working hours, maybe by employees. I don't know. Something like that. Up to you. Again, this is a lot of things you can think about. And there's a lot of depends here. Website information. So like the FAQ shipping information, customer service, uh, that should be employees and customers probably should see both, but definitely a uh, web page on the non-product shipping method, return policy, just cust maybe just customers. You can say that. Probably should this be encrypted? No, I think it's like product catalog. It should be easy. Who can modify it? Only employees. But maybe your your um, shipping method or return policy changes. I want customers changing that. Should that be available? Again, kind of all the time. But if it's down once in a while, or like, oh, customer service isn't available twenty four seven. If it's small operation, they probably don't have phone lines of twenty four seven. Maybe that's okay. Up to you. Employee information. Uh, who views this? Oh, is it time to go yet? No. Almost. I'm actually going to pause it right here. Wait, employee information. I'm going to finish this. Employees should see their own information. They're being encrypted. If it's ever personal information, social security number. Yes. Yes. Who modifies? Probably employees themselves. Um, some of this is like, you know, payroll info. This might be HR. It's not like the individual employee can just change their info. Like, oh, here's my salary. Here's my payroll info. Here's how much money I make. It might be certain employees on here, right? When is it needed by whom? I'd say employees and like H human resources, but probably not all the time. It's probably just working hours. Stuff like that. But I don't know. Up to you and what you think. I'm going to pause the video right here. All right. We finished the CIA triad. Let's look at the Internet of Things. What's this? The idea of the Internet of Things or the IoT is the idea that every device is connected to the Internet. Your toaster, your refrigerator, your washing machine and dryer are connected to the Internet. And what is the benefit of this? Hey. Maybe they can send some information to your phone. Maybe you can access them from home. Uh, your thermo thermostat at home. I, I've got one where I can uh, see what the temperature of my house is and adjust the temperature if I'm like away. So maybe like I'm on my way home, I want to turn the heater on or turn the AC on to get ready so when I come in, it feels nice, right? But Or I go, oops, I forgot to turn it off after I, after I left the house for work. I can just remotely go into my phone and turn it off. Uh, same thing with the fridge and stuff. I'm like, you might have a refrigerator that that has a big screen on the front. That's that's almost like like Good morning, Mister Brophy. Today is Friday. I know what you love for breakfast. You want that breakfast sandwich, or your leftovers from from John Smith's subs are there right now. You can eat your leftovers for breakfast if you want. You're out, you're out of food. You have to go. You're out of eggs. Want me to put that on your grocery list? Go down to Sam's Club and buy more? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe they can do some weird stuff. But everything's connected. Everything's got an app on your phones. Stupid things have apps. But the idea is to improve your quality of life. But, you know, there's a trade-off. Since everything's connected, uh, it's sharing, is that information sensitive? Maybe it's sharing, sharing sensitive information. Can can it be the target of cyber attacks? Can someone hack into your refrigerator and turn it off? I don't know. Uh, maybe. You know, if you connect things online like that, then you're just opening it up to be vulnerable. And, and the question is how, I think the question with that is like, is anyone going to keep updating the, the software on your computers to keep it on your toaster to keep it secure? Uh, is anyone going to update 
or does anyone care to hack it? Is there anything in there that's really useful for some cyber attacker, attacker to come in? Probably not either. I don't know. But these are questions to ask as more things become connected to the Internet of Things. Everything's on the Internet. Uh, skip the ethical scenario, driverless cars. You can do that on your own. Uh, oh, the lab that I've had open for a long time now. More connectivity means that more information is available. And as you learned, too much availability can cause privacy concerns. Whenever you're connected to the internet, sites that you visit, information you enter, apps that you run, all that can be tracked without you even knowing it. All this data can be used in many ways. So marketing companies can track your interests, like put cookies on your computer. And maybe they say, oh, I can target your advertisements in a certain way because you've visited these types of websites. Hey, maybe that's okay. But maybe some malicious users can track you and maybe like scam information that you type in or, you know, save, save your credit card information, save passwords. I don't know. There's even larger data breaches on websites. So if everything's being tracked, it just becomes a target to be attacked. So we're on our lab. Access the Windows Workstation. I'm going to close all these windows. Windows Workstation launched Google Chrome. So Windows Workstation, Chrome. I'm going to open Chrome in my Chrome browser. Nice. Search for, then visit the Chrome Web Store. Okay. How do you find the Chrome Web Store? Is it under Developer Tools? Uh, extensions? I thought it was extensions. And open the Chrome Web Store, sure. That's how I get to it. All right. Chrome Web Store, search for Disconnect. The one you want to install is Disconnect, offered by Disconnect. Okay. And then the one they want is install is Disconnect.me, not Disconnect Search. Don't you hate that? So I'm looking for something that looks like that. Oh, disconnect me, but they changed what it looks like. So it's this one. I'm going to add it to my Chrome. Cool. What does disconnect me do? So the, the idea is we can use some apps, or some extensions in our browsers to kind of prevent us from being tracked on things. Uh, add it to Chrome. I'm adding the extension and then let's click the app. Then we see this this extension right here. So what does this do? I don't know. Every time you visit a site, disconnect automatically detects when your browser requests websites websites other than the site you're visiting. It happens when one website includes other websites, such as advertising or tracking. Disconnect categorizes all these requests in two different groups: advertising, social, etc. It blocks the requests except content, which is the website content you most likely in. Sometimes a website. It's not just stuff from their website. They pull in from other websites. That's typically how like ads work and stuff like that. It's like ad websites that pull stuff in. So, okay. So if I went to like yahoo.com. Oh, it, nothing even. I hate. It's not really connected to the internet. So what is it going to be? To see how it works, go to pltw.org, amazon.com, and Disney. Disney.com. And then, oh, and DeLorean. Oh, awesome. Oh, geez. I haven't even watched the first season. I don't like the, it's, the, the text seems kind of squished right now, so I'm refreshing. Click, okay, so we're going to click the disconnect icon. So, Disney.com. Each of these will have things. Click the disconnect icon and select visualize page. Visualize pages right here. So, oh, this is kind of neat. So you can drag this around. And then visit. So Disney pulls from Disney IO, Go, Fonts, Google. That's probably ads. Double click is an ad thing. I don't know what these are. So it's different ways to see what's going on. All right. The graph is interactive. Experiment by clicking on the icons, hovering over different parts of the graph. So this is kind of neat. Okay, so if I click this one, what's this? 
So you can click on this and say, oh, where's all this fonts.net? Oh, I can't just go to it. That's kind of lame. How many sites in addition to Disney did your browser access? Which ones, if any, are familiar to you? So again, you might click this. Okay, I've seen double click. That's ads, Google services. That's some kind of ad type thing. I don't know what these are. Disney.io, I assume is, is a Disney thing. I don't know what go.com is. I don't know. With your cyber team, discuss the implication. So how does it affect? I mean, think about this. You know, there's a lot of different websites that are probably tracking. Maybe they're ads. Maybe it's just Disney is broken up into different things. I don't know what's going on. Fonts. I mean, why is fonts? Why is fonts.net? I don't even know what those are. I don't even know what that is. Uh, one thing with this, when you when you're blocking these, is oh, okay. Sometimes it's Twitter. Sometimes it's Facebook stuff, right? So, I mean, that's the idea. You, you've seen these kind of things. I, I get ad blockers. I mean, in my side, I have uBlock Origins. I don't know if you can see that. uBlock Origins do this, but if there's other ad blockers. That's probably really good right now. So, I like that ad blocker. I think ad blockers are great to have. Your own digital footprint. Refer to your digital footprint. Remember when you did that? You, add, you had all your social media and apps. Do you think any of your devices are vulnerable to cyber attacks? Yeah. So, I don't know. Think about the stuff that you use. Can it be, you know, if you go to certain websites or you're keeping passworded information? I mean, maybe if the, there's been websites that have been cracked and like user information got out. And what information do you save there? I don't know. So those are things to think about. And it's like, how do you keep yourself secure? Uh, they use that disconnect thing. I don't need, you know, it's basically ad blockers and stuff. My suggestion, you block origins. I mean, that's a lot of the stuff in this lesson, in this class comes down to get something that blocks this. Think about, oh, get an get a wet, you know, an add-on extension that blocks ads. Update your settings. Less the number one lesson in this class is update your set, settings, get an ad blocker. You can even get them on your phones nowadays, too. I haven't yet. I don't know. That's just out of laziness. I think uBlock Origins has one. I really would do that. So that's it, folks. Thank you. I'm gonna stop the video.